Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we're taking a look today at another computer on a stick. This is the Asus Chrome Bit. This is not to be confused with the Chromecast because this is running a full Chrome OS installation on here. So it's pretty much a little computer uh, that you can plug into your television. We've looked at a lot of Windows uh, computers on a stick and now we've got one running uh, with the Chrome operating system. If you are not familiar with Chrome OS, uh, definitely check out my video link below where I describe exactly what it is because it is slightly different than how uh, you might be accustomed to with Windows. But the price is right on this, about $85. Uh, and you've got yourself a computer that you can plug into your television. So it's not much to look at actually, there's no buttons on it or anything. Uh, there is a USB port in the back here that you can use to plug in a keyboard or mouse or maybe some external storage for playing back movies. Uh, there is an HDMI connector here on the front for plugging it into your television. Uh, if for some reason you do not have enough room behind your TV for something this long, uh, you do have this uh, HDMI extender cable that comes in the box. You can kind of uh, get it uh, configured in a way that it'll fit uh, behind your television. They also give you some Velcro you can stick on the back of it so you can stick it to the back of your TV too uh, when you do find an orientation that works for you. Uh, there is Bluetooth on board so you can connect uh, Bluetooth keyboards and mice to it. So if you want to sit across a room that is possible. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, and it is powered by a Rockship 3288 processor. This is a uh, chip we're now seeing in a lot of Chrome OS and Android devices lately, especially ones that come uh, from Chinese manufacturers. It's actually a very nicely performing chip. Uh, Asus is using it in their new Chromebook Flip, and it uh, really does quite uh, well, even compared against uh, more expensive Intel chips. It doesn't heat up all that much. There's no fan on here, uh, and the performance on it so far has been pretty good. So what we're gonna do now uh, is get this thing booted up and we'll see how it performs. All right, so we're gonna connect this to my video system right now that I used to record. Normally you'll be connecting it directly to a television. Uh, you do need to give it some power too. It has a power cord in the box, uh, 18 watts of power. So it's a little bit more than what you might see on some of those Intel Windows sticks, but it does boot up very fast. So you can see here we are already at our main menu. Now the one gripe that I have is that uh, the first time you boot it up, and this is not the gripe part, uh, the first time you boot it up, it asks for a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, which is great because it assumes that you don't have a USB device handy or you may not want to use a USB device. The problem is, is that if you plug in a USB device first, it will never ask you at the front screen for, for Bluetooth ever again. So right now, if I didn't have this uh, USB connector here for my wireless keyboard, uh, I would be completely out of luck. So we're gonna plug that in right now and now I can get on it. But uh, it would be nice that if it doesn't see a Bluetooth keyboard that was previously paired with it uh, or have a USB device connected for it to pull up that Bluetooth menu when you first boot it because this is something you're gonna move around a lot. It would be nice that it kind of recognizes that you may not always have the same keyboard handy uh, when you want to use it. So that would be one thing I'd like to see. But that's really my only gripe with this at all because it really does uh, perform very nicely. It boots up very quickly. Uh, the performance is really good even for web browsing and everything else. It's just a, uh, just a nice device to use here. So you can see the New York Times comes up very quickly. I am gonna go over to some YouTube stuff though because that's really uh, indicative of how well it will do on some of the video services. So we'll pull up my YouTube channel here and we'll let that load up and I'm gonna click on one of my videos and watch one of those at 1080p. So we'll click on that and that will start up and uh, as you can see it streams up very very quickly almost immediately uh, this does run with uh, wireless ac both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band so it has uh, really good performing wireless on there uh, so if you have a newer router it's going to take advantage of that uh, you can see here too the full screen video also works very quickly too so this is a 30 frames per second video i'm going to go over to this one that i shot at 60 frames per second so you can get a feel for how a more demanding video will uh, have on it here i'm just going to switch out back over to my camera here so you can see it is running at 1080p 60 and what i'm going to do now is uh, just kind of skip ahead a little bit in the video too so you can get a feel for how well it can seek and then uh, re queue up the video so we'll let that go you can see the little thing going at the bottom there and now we are back to where we were uh, so very smooth frame rates really no issues whatsoever with uh, playing back one of those 60 frames per second videos that sometimes will uh, attack some of the other intel based machines we've looked at recently so uh, these rock chip uh, chips are really pretty good for uh, this kind of work now the one thing that doesn't do well is 4k video so i'm going to pull up our a 4K video file here, and you'll see uh, that one's going to stutter a little bit more than we saw 
uh, with the 1080p 60 video. So it will play back, but you'll get some of this lag going on here. Uh, it's really not well suited for 4K video at all. So I would say stick to 1080. That's really its sweet spot. Uh, it can play it back, but again, you'll get some drop frames and a little bit of uh, you know a little flakiness as that goes on there. Uh, Netflix and Amazon Video both work fine. It's really not well suited though for you know home theater kind of usage. So it doesn't support the digital audio formats that you may want if you have a home theater receiver. It's also uh, not always the best interface to navigate with a web browser browser like this from your couch, but it does play back maybe more than uh, some of these video players do because it does support Amazon Video, Netflix, Hulu. Uh, most of the things you can access with a web browser, you can plug this into your television and get at. So if, the, if your favorite thing is only on the web, uh, this is probably the best way to get at it. It just doesn't have uh, the nicest couch-based interface for you because you will have to have something like this uh, you know, across the room and you know, kind of moving the mouse around and stuff. It's not always the uh, best possible interface. On the Octane Benchmark Test, which measures its ability to render uh, JavaScript and HTML. It scores 7,509. So performance-wise, this puts it pretty much where all the other Rockship Chrome OS devices are at, including that uh, Asus Chromebook Flip that we looked at recently, which is a very nice uh, portable version of what you're looking at here. So uh, really decent performance out of it. I think it's going to uh, do very well as a very simple and inexpensive uh, PC device that you can carry around with you also. So it doesn't take up a lot of room, uh, doesn't heat up, doesn't consume all that much power, and is uh, really very, very very good as a web browsing device and will be able to do uh, everything you might want to do with a web browser uh, very well for very minimal cost. So get a keyboard, get a mouse, get a television, and you're done. You've got yourself another computer in the house. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.